Hello Calvary, my name is Kevin. I am the Next Gen Pastor at our Beaumont campus and we are here to introduce you to our prayer emphasis for the next few weeks leading up to Easter. We are going to make available these uh, prayer guides that are going to help you uh, pray along with us as a church. Uh, we are using this time to sort of reintroduce a uh, prayer emphasis that we can focus on individually throughout the week and come together on Sundays during the worship service and pray together over. So uh, it is a very simple guide and it's all centered around praying the scriptures, going over a specific uh, passage of scripture and praying that scripture together during the week. And we will likely have some opportunities for you to share what that's been like for you, whether that's through email, through our social media. Uh, this is going to be available on our website. It's also going to be available in a hard copy form this Sunday for you to pick up and to have. And we'll talk about it more as we're there. But we want these uh, devotionals to sort of be a guide for you to do it if you've never done anything like this before. It is sort of adapted from uh, Bridgetown Church's uh, prayer emphasis that they did a few years ago, and they adapted that from what's called uh, the Ignatian Examine. It's these questions that you ask yourself through the week, uh, usually at the end of the day, uh, that sort of reorient your day around what God has been doing or what God is calling you to do uh, in the coming days or weeks. And so we're going to do it together. I'm just going to go and do it like I would normally be doing it on my own. Uh, and this is for you to use as a guide as much as you uh, would like to if you've never done anything like this before. I'll go through the steps of this and kind of explain uh, where I'm going with it and, and how we would like for you to use the resource uh, together as a church. So our scripture for this week, for the week of March 13th, is uh, Romans 8, 26 through 28. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he searches hearts. He who searches hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit, knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. We're starting with this scripture because it's sort of an introductory scripture to the concept of prayer itself. We don't know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit intercedes on behalf of us. So as we are praying to God to help us in our prayers. We're asking God to, to meet with us, to have a real and transformative time with us throughout the week. We are recognizing that we don't know what to do, but that we are completely dependent on that interaction with God. And so we're coming to the source uh, for our, our strength. We're coming uh, to one who understands what we're going through, to one who uh, we can share everything that we're going to, even the things that we are feeling. And we're coming to one who uh, we confess our sins to, we repent, we, we turn away from things that are harmful to us and turn, turn towards what God wants for us. Uh, and then uh, at the very end of the process, we resolve. We, we ask God to help us to do those things that he's calling us to do. We ask God to take from us the things that he is uh, wanting to take from us, the things that he's wanting to remove from our lives. And we commit the next day or the next part of our week to him. And so the process of this is really simple. You begin just by reading that scripture, reading those verses, the, the verses from Romans chapter 8. And then we spend some time, the, the guide says three to five minutes. We won't do that the entire three to five minutes here, but we would spend some time in contemplation. Now, contemplation just means thinking about God and thinking about God through these specific scriptures, deep, silent thought over the words of these verses. And so if you're doing it on your own, uh, you can pause the video or you can uh, uh, do it later in that way where you would have a, a time where you're just silent. Not silently praying, but just being silent, resting in silence and allowing prayer to be a conversation, not just a monologue. It's a dialogue. It is us talking to God, but it's us listening for what God would say to us through the scriptures. And so 
Some, some really practical ways that we can do that is to find a place that's completely separate from everywhere else. Uh, when I was growing up, there were six of us, and so there were no quiet places in our house, and so there was a master bathroom that had a closet on the other side of uh, the bathroom in the bedroom. You couldn't get to it no matter what. I would go in there. That's a quiet place to just sit in silence. Silence is difficult for us because we always want to fill it with something. The silence here is supposed to be for God to be the one who's filling that silence with what he would have us hear, uh, specifically through his word. And that is prayer. That, that is our relationship with God being formed by time with him. And so as you spend some time in silence, three to five minutes, it's going to feel like a really long time. Uh, but if you want to get the most out of it, I, I would spend at least that amount of time just in silent contemplation over these verses. It might be with your eyes closed. It might be looking over the verses, just listening for what God might be saying to us through these verses. And then we want you to read the verses again, read through them. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And so as we're allowing God to speak to us through the Holy Spirit, we're allowing God to speak to us through his word, we want to pick out some words ourselves that might be standing out to us. Words like, if I was doing this on my own, words like the Spirit. What does it mean that the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings, groanings too deep for words? What does it mean that not knowing to pray how we ought the Spirit groans like creation groans for uh, the coming of our Savior. And so we, we participate in that groaning. So just focusing on those. Again, you're not, you're not trying to necessarily understand everything. You're not trying to have like a study Bible open during this. This is just for you to, to contemplate and focus on two or three words and allow God to speak to you through those. What does it mean to be called according to his purpose, to be those who are loved by God and to recognize that no matter what's going on in our life, that there's something that God has called us to. There's, there's, there is a purpose. What do, what do I view as my purpose? Those are thoughts, things that as you are uh, practicing contemplation uh, that your mind might be drawn to. And, and again, if you're finding a quiet place, if you are designating a time to do this and making that time sacred, and if you are making it a point to get rid of all distractions, Apple Watches, phones, TVs, everything, nothing that can distract you from what you're, maybe 10 or 15 minutes that you're going to spend uh, an intentional time uh, of prayer and allowing God's word to speak uh, to you. At the very end of it, uh, you take what God might be saying to you, and you sort of apply it through uh, these uh, words. Replay, rejoice, repent, and resolve. And this is the, this is Bridgetown Church's language. We've borrowed it for uh, our prayer guide. But replay, what happened today? Talk to God about the events of your day or the day before. Be open, honest, transparent without asking for anything. Just share of yourself with the one who delights in you. And so for me... Uh, if, if you're looking, if you're doing this at the beginning of the day, you might look at the past few days. If you're doing it at the end of the day, you might just look at your day for that day. You might think about things that happened to you uh, that day or the past few days. Uh, things that are happy, things that are sad, thing, just things that happened to you. I uh, raked the window, the side, the passenger mirror off my car in the morning on my way to work a few days ago. And I was trying to get out of the way of the garbage truck. I was hurried. I wasn't, uh, I, I was not <laughs> uh, probably thinking about things or especially uh, uh, acting on emotions maybe the way I should have because I got really angry. I got really mad. I was throwing the mirror back in my car. And so that's something that God can handle. I got angry when I raked the mirror off my car. Th this is the time where you would share that with God. This is, this is something that happened in my day. Something really good happened. I, I, I was able later that day to spend time with friends and fellowship. It was very good. It was life-giving to me, just replaying your day. And that's it. That's, that's where you want to, to keep that. There's, there's lines there to, to kind of write down and to kind of journal if you've never practiced journaling before. But it's just talking to God about your day uh, without asking for anything. That's, that's hard. 
Uh, that's difficult to do, but it's it's the same way that you would talk to a close friend, right? I'm telling you everything that happened today, or you get home from work and you're telling your spouse everything that happened that day. That that's where what you want to kind of rest in uh, in the replay section. Rejoice is the next section. Where did I feel grace today? Where was God particularly present? Thank God for small moments that he gave you throughout the day. If none seem apparent, ask him to reveal to you where he may have been working without you even knowing it. And so this one would be, where did I feel God working in my life today? And and again, if if there's not a place, if there's not a time where I I felt particularly uh, uh, far from God today or I felt absent from God, there there, there are uh, a couple more sections here that uh, that uh, speak to that. But really think about, because if we're honest with ourselves, when we're going throughout the day, we might not have noticed it, but I might think back to, uh, I, I try to uh, at least talk to my grandmother every day or, or go and see her before I uh, leave for work. And so those times are, are very sweet for me because she uh, has a lot of time and she prays for me and she lets me know that she's praying. For, she lets me know she's praying for people I work with, friends that she's remembered by name. Like that is, to me, that's God using my grandmother to speak truth in life to me. And so sometimes in the hectic nature of our days, we don't see that in the moment when it's happening. When we're thinking about it, if you're doing this later in the day, when we're thinking about that happening, you can you can kind of focus in on those points that uh, usually we would pass over. So that's all this section is for. Just rejoice. Thank God for the ways that he was active and moving in your life, even when you didn't even realize it then. Write some of those things down. Ask him if there's nothing there that comes to your mind uh, immediately. Ask him to show you those things so you can write them down. Uh, next one is repent. Where did I feel emotional pain today? Uh, what were some negative emotions that I experienced? Share those with God. Write them down. I felt angry when I raked the mirror off my car. Where did I sin? Share your hurts and pains with the Lord. Invite him to walk alongside you in suffering. Don't hide yourself from his presence, but simply embrace the fact that he is close to the brokenhearted. Also enter into a time of confession for the sins that you committed today. So, Sometimes it's really hard for us to see uh, where God has been working, and sometimes we need some help seeing that. I don't often need help seeing where I've failed. That's very apparent to me. And so uh, that's part of what's happening here in the repent section. Another part is there might be something that has nothing to do with your sins or your failures. It might just be a a real emotion that you're feeling, right? We want to share that with God. We don't have to repent of our emotions. We can repent of the ways that our emotions cause us to act when we're trusting in emotions. And so there's two separate things going on there, right? We want to be honest and open with God about how we're feeling, but we also want to be able to say, hey, this is where I know I failed, where I know it's all on me, and where I know you're the only one uh, that can help me. And so that's what we're doing when we're repenting. We're, We're agreeing with God about our sin, that our sin is harmful, detrimental to us, and we want him to be the one. Uh, to forgive us, uh, to help us with it, and uh, to repent of it, to turn away from it. And very lastly, resolve. How will you be different tomorrow? Ask God to radically transform you for your day tomorrow and give the day to him. Repent of the things that you've asked forgiveness for. Commit to step out in faith and show others the love of Christ daily. And so this is, uh, if we're going to use the uh, huddle material that we use for our discipleship groups, this is the what am I going to do about it? So there's things that I've hopefully by the end of this process, there's things I've been able to point to and say God's moving in my life. There's things I've been able to point to and say, these are things that I need to get right with God or I need to to repent of. This is the, what am I going to do about it? And there's lines here to write also, to write down, tomorrow I'm going to do this. And that has been very helpful for me to be able to say, okay, what now? Have action steps. Tomorrow, I'm going to be more aware of my emotions. Tomorrow, I'm going to, I, I did get the mirror fixed. So that that, that was a, a way that uh, I didn't have to be frustrated about that anymore. It's very simple stuff like that. Tomorrow, I'm going to be intentional about sharing my faith with somebody. I know that there's somebody I work with that really needs to hear the hope that I have. Tomorrow, I resolve to do this thing that God is calling me to do. And so you end in prayer. And it's very simple. Uh, replay, rejoice, repent. Resolve all uh, at the 
end of allowing God to speak to you through uh, the scriptures that we as uh, a staff uh, have uh, gone over and uh, decided that we would like to pray over as a church. And so hopefully it's something that uh, will be impactful to you uh, and something that uh, God can use in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, that you are in charge, that you are in control, that you are on the throne. God, I pray that you would use this time of prayer that we are entering into as a church to be impactful and fruitful in individual lives, but also for it to strengthen us corporately. For us to be able to see that just the simple act of praying over the words of Scripture, of applying those to our lives, of, of inviting you into our hurts, our pains, our joys, and our future plans, uh, God, that you can do great and mighty things. God, we pray that you would do that as we look forward to Easter, as we look forward to celebrating the resurrection, the defeat of death, sin, and the grave. God, we pray that you would first and foremost remind us that we live resurrected lives, that we are new creations, and that you've called us to that newness. God, I pray that uh, that would be true of us as individuals and as a church today. It's in your son's name we pray these things. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week.